Hello everyone and welcome to another Doodle With Me video. Today we're going to be doing a trick or treat watercolour doodle creation. The materials I'm starting off with are 300 GSMs of cold pressed watercolour paper, sharp pencil, eraser, Pigma Micron Fineliner and a Tom Bowford Nosuke hard tip pen before laying down any paint. And of course watercolour. All materials that I'm using today are listed in the description below. I like to sketch everything out in pencil first so that I can work out where I want everything to go and make sure I like the whole composition before anything on the paper becomes permanent. So now I'm happy with the overall design and I've sketched everything out in pencil. I'm then going to go over everything in a fine liner pen. Did you know, although it is unknown precisely where the phrase trick or treat was coined, the custom had been firmly established in the American popular culture by 1951, when trick-or-treating was depicted in the Peanuts comic strip. In 1952, Disney produced a cartoon called Trick-or-Treat featuring Donald Duck and his nephews Huey, Dewey and Louie. So why do we trick-or-treat and where did trick-or-treating come from? So after doing a little bit of research, this is what I found out. Halloween has its roots in the ancient pre-Christian Celtic festival of Samhain, which was celebrated on the eve of the 31st of October. The Celts who lived 2000 years ago in the area that is now Ireland, the UK and France, believe that the dead returned to the earth on Samhain. On this sacred night, people gathered to light bonfires, offer sacrifices and pay homage to the dead. During these celebrations, villagers disguise themselves in costumes made of animal skins to drive away phantom visitors. Banquet tables were prepared and food was left out to placate unwelcome spirits. And here's my cat, Bob, who loves to make appearances in most of my videos, bless him. So anyway, in later centuries, people began dressing as ghosts, demons and other malevolent creatures, performing antics in exchange for food and drink. So quickly going back to the drawing, I am erasing all the pencil lines before I start to paint, because they will show through if I don't. And then laying down a background in this beautiful moon glow watercolour paint by Daniel Smith before adding any further detail. So where was I? Oh yeah, dressing up in exchange for food and drink. This custom was known as mumming and it dates back to the Middle Ages and is thought to be the precursor of trick-or-treating. By the 9th century, Christianity had spread into Celtic lands where gradually it blended and replaced other pagan rites. In 1000 AD, the church designated the 2nd of November as All Souls Day, a time for honouring the dead. Celebrations in England resembled Celtic commemorations of Samhain, complete with bonfires and masquerades. Poor people would visit the houses of wealthier families and receive pastries called soul cakes in exchange for a promise to pray for the souls of the homeowner's dead relatives, known as souling, the practice was later taken up by children who would go from door to door asking for gifts such as food, money and ale. In Scotland and Ireland, young people took part in a tradition called guising, dressing up in costumes and accepting offerings from various households. Rather than pledging to pray for the dead, they would sing a song, recite a poem, tell a joke or perform some sort of trick before collecting their treats which typically consisted of fruit, nuts and coins. So how did trick-or-treating become so popular in the United States? Some American colonists and in the mid-19th century, large numbers of new immigrants, especially those fleeing the Irish potato famine in the 1840s, helped popularize Halloween. In the early 20th century, the Irish and Scottish communities revived the old world traditions of souling and guising in the United States. By the 1920s, however, pranks had become the Halloween activity of choice for rounder young people. This trend became suddenly restricted, however, with the outbreak of World War II, 
when sugar rationing meant there were few treats to hand out. At the height of the post-war baby boom, trick-or-treating reclaimed its place among other Halloween customs. It quickly became standard practice for millions of children in America's cities and newly built suburbs. No longer constrained by sugar rationing, sweet companies capitalized on the lucrative ritual, launching national advertising campaigns specifically aimed at Halloween. So with all the doodles painted, I'm finished. So are you guys going trick-or-treating this year? And if so, what are you dressing up as? Let me know in the comments section below. And also let me know what you think of the final piece. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please give it a like. And if you'd like to support my art and the channel, then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to keep you updated on future content. Thank you so, so much for watching. Keep safe and have a happy Halloween.